25th in his first P top 25 in his first PT. Chad, on the other hand, he's uh, you know in his mid 20s. He's been playing since he was like 13. I've known him for pretty much that long. Um, you know, very good player. He uh, plays on and off. He's sort of had periods where he sometimes he's playing a little bit. Sometimes he starts getting uh, he's got the fever again. But he recently top aided the uh, SCG Open back in New Jersey, so he's starting to play a lot more Magic. Yeah, he top aided the Standard Open uh, yeah. in summer. So yeah, so he was able to do that with Jun. With Jun, loves Jun. Plays it pretty much in every format. So not surprised to see him here playing it in Legacy. A love of Jun, someone that actually loves it. Wow, takes a <laughs> lot. The Mestro is going to start off with a Scalding Tarn here. And you're going to see a Thoughtseize here from Castell. We thought maybe, you know, most of the time, these are Rug Delver decks are going to play something on turn one, a Ponder or what have you. Here is Demestro. He's got a Force of a Forked Bolt, a Nibble Mongoose, a Lightning Bolt, and two Wastelands, one of which I wouldn't be surprised to see him fire off next turn. But let's see what Castell is going to take with this Thoughtseize. Interesting, Demestro didn't decide not to lead with the Nibble Mongoose on turn one. I am surprised as well. Possibly because he was afraid of... Uh, cutting himself off a red mana, which he might have needed. Maybe he doesn't know what the matchup is just yet. Sure, sure. Um, so, kind of understandable there. Obviously, if you're playing against elves, you want to make sure you can cast that fork bolt and lightning bolt. So, um, this is probably one of those situations where the master just didn't know what he's playing against. Okay, well, Nimble Mongoose is the card that's taken there by Thoughts. He's wasteland going to take care of the bad lands for Castell. So, the master is going to pass the turn back. And Castell wow. misses. Wow. So he kept the one lander and got punished immediately by Demestrio. At this point, I think Demestrio, it's worth actually just getting the move at Mongoose in play. Oh, it's much, much more worth it now. But did he pass? That looks to be the case. Looks like Castell's probably wow. going to have to discard here again. What, what, do you, what do you think there could be the reason why he wouldn't cast a Nimble Mongoose? The, the Mongoose got taken by the. Uh, oh, okay. By the Thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. That's okay. So it looks like Demastro just playing the waiting game here. Not able to take advantage of the fact that Castell doesn't have any lands actually right now. Yeah, but I mean this favors him so much because Castell's deck list, if you take a look at it, as far as basic is concerned, he does have a forest and he does have a swamp, so he can fade a wasteland. But if uh, Demestrio happens to draw a stifle, which he does have three copies of, they'll be able to take care of a fetch land. So Castell's in a pretty bad spot right now, trying to figure out what to discard now. Yeah, Demestrio does have another wasteland in his hand, so um, obviously. Not really in a good position for Chad. Chad's going to have to start drawing his basic land. He does have a Sylvan Library in play, so if you can somehow get that to resolve, but that's going to re probably rely on him drawing one of his basics and then using playing the Bur Grove of the Burn Willows and casting it. Demestria does have a Force of Will, but currently he just has red cards in his hand. He's just basically looking for any creature or any cantrip card. Spell Pierce to the draw. Somehow he, he hasn't cast a Brainstorm or a Ponder, and his one creature got Thoughtseize. So if he f just finds anything, he can function. Looks like Castell has a Grove of the Burn Willows here. Actually, has, it looks like he might have another one in his hand. I'm not quite sure. Maybe even sandbagging the first one. Yeah, I think because of the fact that he had a Sylvan Library in his hand, okay. he was trying to you know ensure of maybe getting into play. But uh, again... Master has a spell pierce anyway, so it's going to be really tough for Chad to actually resolve that Sylvan Library if he does yeah. draw, basically. It's going to be very, very hard to do. So it's like Chad's going to let Joe gain a life just so he can get back that uh, Punishing Fire, mm -hmm. and Demestrio pulls the trigger on the Wasteland there. Wasteland the draw there for Castell, so looks like he's uh, starting to find his way into a couple of lands here. It took him a little while, but looks like he's not doing as poorly now. And uh, Demestrio does have both the spell pierce, uh, Force of Will, and uh, he also has, it looks like, a daze, too. So putting a lot of pressure on uh, Chad's mana. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chad really doesn't have a lot to work with here. However, Demestro is still not pressuring him. So if Chad can get on a run here where he can draw two or three lands, um, he can start unloading all the spells that are in his hand, particularly Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf, um, very difficult for Rug Delver generally to deal with. Um, so uh, even though Demestro does have a number of lightning bolts and fork bolts in his hand, he would have to actually probably two for one himself in order to deal with it. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's always, like you said yesterday, um, and this morning as well, mana mana screw beats mana flood. Yep. A lot of the time. So there is your Grove of the Burn Willows. That's going to come into play, and is he going to go with Tarmogoyf, or is he going to go with the Sylvan Library? He's, He's going to go try Tarmogoyf. to get a Tarmogoyf in play. So Mestre likely to daze this right here. It's certainly good to daze. Does he have a daze? I'm, pre I'm fairly sure he does. I mean, we'll see what, exactly what Demestra's going to do. You see the, the count of Tarmogoyf here, so if this resolves, we're going to get our Tarmogoyf out there, but just a hard cast days will take care of that. So, Castell, you know, starting to rebuild his mana here. Demestra finally draws a threat in Nimble Mongoose, so 
Um, finally, something you can commit to the board here. It took, him, took him long enough. Took him Jeez. a while, yeah. Let's see if Chad can get a, uh, another time of it. Um, oh, he drew a blood break elf yet. So here's a uh, Sylvan Library likely they're going to be running to Spell Pierce. Mm -hmm. Cannot let that resolve. That'll let him actually hit all of his land drops here. So Spell Pierce is going to come down. It's going to take care of the Sylvan Library. It's going to give Demestrium more cards in his graveyard. You see the two fetch lands in play over there as well. So I think we are safe to assume that Nimble Molecules is going to be a 3-3 for the duration of this game. Yeah, especially with double bolt and, and uh, fourth bolt in your hand, as well as two sack lands. Likely he has threshold right now. So. Um, Demestro sacks one of his lands to, to find another mana. Um, I believe that probably gives him threshold. Probably wants to save one of the other ones in case he draws a brainstorm and wants to kind of reshape his hand. See the Demestro going to set his deck just how he wants it. Going to draw a card, finds a Ponder, his first cantripping card of the game. So he's going to take a look at the top three cards. Wow. Has a, he has a Wasteland and a Stifle, Stifle on yeah. top. So. Really good ponder there. He can wasteland the Grove of the Burn Willows, keeping Chad off of red and green mana. And he could also uh, draw that stifle to stop Chad from actually getting a sack land. Mm -hmm. so, um, pretty good ponder there. The mana denial strategies of Rug Delver coming into play right now. There's your wasteland. Get the Grove of the Burn Willows out of here, says Demestrio. Come on in for three. Mr. Mongoose going to knock Castell down to 15. I'm going to fast the turn back with just that lone wasteland. Some major mana issues here for the Jun player. Does have 23 lands in his deck, does Castell, but Stifle's going to stop the next fetch land. And uh, Demestria has a land on top of his library, so he can sack this golden turn to get rid of it, too. Yeah, try to clear, draw clear more that more off. Gas, so. um, Joe firmly in the driver's seat this game. And this is, you know, I think uh, we were watching, um, we were actually watching Chad playtest this matchup earlier this round, and... It was exactly this matchup, Jun versus Rug Delver, and this is how you lose. I mean, Rug Delver is very good at putting pressure on your mana, and Jun, even though you know you wouldn't think it, is actually a pretty mana hungry deck. Basically. Yeah. And um, you know, Wasteland, Stifle. There's just so many cards that put pressure on your mana. And plus, you know, you are trying to get the four mana cast Blood Raid off to get that little two for one out there, yeah. generate an advantage, maybe hit an insane spell. But if, you know, De um, Demestrio's deck and Rug Delver overall it is a mana denial strategy. Uh, that's what it does. It, it basically capitalizes on messing with your mana, and while you take the time to try to rebuild it, it'll kill you with a Delver of Secrets, or a Nimble Mongoose, and potentially a Tarmogoyf, as Fork Bolt will take care of the Deathrite Shaman, and across comes the Mongoose, going to knock Castell down to 9, and I believe that Demestrio does have two bolts in his hand as well. Yeah, it looks like he has a Forcible too. Unfortunately, um, and he does have the blue card. He does card. have a stifle for it, so... He does have a, a way to pitch, and now he's showing Chad yep. he has double bolt. So, Demestrio takes game one uh, due to some, um, I'm not sure, interesting keep there by Chad. He did not mulligan his hand. He kept a uh, one land thought seize hand. He probably had a death right champion as well, but again, I don't know if, if he knew he was playing against Rug Delver. I don't think he can keep that hand. But yeah, again, one lander is very very risky. Against what them. do you? Yeah, well, you don't really know what you're playing against there. Against Rug Delver, it's uh, if you're playing Jun, there's no way you can keep a one land hand. Yeah. I don't think. So, um, had Chad known who he was playing against, maybe he would have mulled a little more aggressively there. But uh, either way, Chad loses the first game and goes to his sideboard. And looking at his sideboard, he has uh, some options here. He has a uh, four copies of Fire Blast. Two Nile Spell Bombs, one Umuzawa Jete, two copies of Duress, one Golgari Charm, one Cross and Grip, three Angel Despair, one Ancient Grudge. Obviously, Angel Despair, uh, Cross and Grip, Ancient Grudge, um, Golgari Charm. Those are cards for other matchups. For this matchup, I could see Duress coming in. I, I kind of like Jete just because it's a, it's one of those cards that's very um, obnoxious once it's in play. There's mm -hmm. not, uh, Rug Delver doesn't have a lot of ways to deal with non-creature permanents. Um, at least, the, so I kind of like having bringing in the Jete. Um, Nile Spell Bomb, I kind of like Nile Spell Bomb too, just because it deals with the, it kind of shrinks Nova Mongoose, it also kind of shrinks uh, Tamagoy sometimes potentially, but um, not quite sure there's enough cards in your main deck that you want to cut, so um, probably not going to bring in the Nile Spell Bombs. And four copies of Pyroblast. I'm not sure how good Pyroblast is in this matchup. I, I, I don't love it. It's it, it, To me, it's too reactive, it yeah. feels like. Um, and I don't think that's a card because you're going to leave Bloodbraid Elf in your deck. It's not a card that you always want to hit with the Cascade either. Exactly. Duress is a much more proactive card, and it does a similar thing to Pyroblast mm -hmm. in terms of if you're trying to force through a spell, 
Um, it can do a Pyroblast, can kill a Delver of Secrets, but I don't think that's something Jund is really worried about. You have plenty of ways to actually deal with the Delver of Secrets. Yeah. It's, uh, it's really, you just don't want to uh, draw, you don't want to make too many dead cards. You don't want to have a lot of dead flips off of your um, Blood Rain off either. That's one of the few ways that you can actually generate some sort of card advantage. Yeah. Um, as far as in his main deck, he has uh, four Death Rite Shaman, four Dark Confidant, four Time Regret, four Blood Rite Elf. Don't really see him wanting to take any of those cards out. Um, four Liliana Veils, three Punishing Fire, three Lightning Bolt, three Thought Seize. So far, I'm not really seeing many cards that he should take out here. He has one copy of Sylvan Library, three Hematoric, one Maelstrom Pulse. Um, the Maelstrom Pulse is probably the weakest card in this matchup. I can see that coming out for the Jete. Um, beyond that, though, Maybe, yeah, beyond that, though, there's not many cards that I want to take out. Um, maybe you want to shave some of the Liliana the Veils just because of how many hungry they are. Yeah, but Liliana's so good yeah, against them. Yeah, especially against Nemo Mongo. Yeah, like, it's so yeah, good. Yeah. They, they typically only have one threat out at a time. Um, and some of the other threats, you can make it so they only have one threat out at a time to catch Nemo Mongo due to Abrupt Decay. Honestly, you might want to just cut some of the Blood Braid Elves just because... Drug Delver's strategy is mana denial, so how often do you think you realistically get to four mana? I don't sure. know. I, I think it, you don't want to you don't want to have multiple blood radios clog up your hand. That's one of the ways you're going to lose. So maybe sh shutting some of those numbers to bring in some cheaper spells like duress um, might be better suited for um, for chat after board. So well, we'll take um, a look at what Demestro is going to do over here. He's got a Graft Digger's Cage, two Flusterstorm, two Rough and Tumble, uh, Sulfur Elemental, an Ancient Grudge, three Submerged, two Pyroblast, one Zoran Orb, one Tormod's Crypt, and a card that we'll bring up on the screen for you guys, one Jace's Phantasm, <laughs> which if you asked me if I was going to see that one today, um, the answer would be no. <laughs> I don't think uh, it's seen a lot of play in any format. I no. I can't recall a format where Jason Phantasm has actually been um, a threat. Yeah, and you see it on the screen here. You know, the one mana, one one flyer for blue. Jason Phantasm gets plus four plus four as long as an opponent has ten or more cards in his or her graveyard. Um, this one has me baffled. Uh, I guess you could bring it in against Dredge. <laughs> yeah, this one. This one's not got exactly me a here. card that would make me happy. That I drew it. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why this one's in the sideboard. So I'm going to take a look at the other ones. But you know, maybe maybe it'll come to us at some point maybe here. Maybe he meant to write Jace's mind, Jace Mind Sculptor. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah, it's a really easy easy thing to mess up there. Or any that. other Jace. Yeah. Card. <laughs> Uh, the Rough Tumble, I think, is the easy one to bring in. It takes care of Death Right Shaman. going to be able to take care of Dark Confidant as well. Um, so that's a pretty good effect to have. Uh, Sulfur Elemental, not really so much for this matchup. Same can be said for Ancient Grudge, even though Castell does have Amazon Shite in his sideboard. Um, so if uh, Demestro knows that, I could see him wanting to board that in. Submerge, I think, is the pretty easy one to board in, however, uh, in this matchup. If Demestro controls an island and Castell controls a forest, he can put a creature back on top. And Castell's deck is going to control a forest a high percentage of the time. So Castell's going to immediately take a mulligan down to at least six cards here while Demestro takes a look at his hand. He's got some bolts. He's got a stifle. He's got multiple Tarmoglyphs. Looks like he might only have one land, though. He looks a Scalding Tarn and a Brainstorm. So yeah. it is a one-lander, and this is an 18-land deck as Rug Delver, so they do have to keep a lot of one-landers, and you have to be comfortable doing so, and Brainstorm can help to uh, help to fix that. Yeah, Brainstorm, plus you're on the draw, plus you have a stifle, so potentially... Um Mana screw your opponent. I think that's a reasonable. You've already thing. convinced yourself to keep this hand. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, I gotta say though, the one interesting thing about Chad's list is he only has 23 lands, whereas a lot of Jun players are running 24. I think it's kind of risky cutting a land um, from the Jun deck simply because you are mana hungry and you're playing in a format where most decks have wasteland. Mm -hmm. So I just don't think you can afford to um, cut a land. It, it, one. This, the main way you lose is when you just can't get your mana engine going. You know, your Punishing Fire engine, yeah. you can't get the Blood Raid mana, so um, cutting a mana seems very risky. To Not me. to mention his own deck has Wasteland. Yeah. So he's going to want to Wasteland his opponent and, and try to get up to Blood Raid off as well. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I think this is a 24 land deck for various reasons. Grove of the Burn Willows plus Punishing Fire being another one of them, um, where you're going to just be a mana-hungry deck. Uh, as you see, Castell's going to draw his six cards, see if he's a little bit happier. It looks like he's got some lands and a Deathrite Shaman. You can make the argument that Deathrite Shaman does act as a land, but it does not actually count as a yeah. land, so that's not the, the healthiest of arguments. And and there are a lot of decks that have uh, one mana answers to Deathrite Shaman mm -hmm. specifically because of how good it is. Yep. And, uh, you know, a, a, you look at a deck like Rug Delver, 
Rug Delver plays a very low mana count, but they have a lot of cantrips. Yep. And uh, they can actually cycle through their deck much more efficiently, whereas Jun really doesn't do that. Yeah. So and Their um, deck is all one mana spells outside of Tarmogoyf and a hardcast force. Exactly. Board. So I think that um, Jun seems like one of those decks that you really want maybe 24, maybe even 25 lands, because you have a lot of powerful spells. The only way you're going to lose those is if you can't cast them, mm -hmm. which we've been seeing here. Uh, um, recently. Submerge the first draw set there for Demestrio. <laughs> Demestrio taking a good long look at it. You can tell that he is a little bit newer to the game. He is very skilled, but the, an, old card, an old card, excuse me, like Submerge, you gotta make sure you know what it does. Yeah, and uh, if we can uh, go back, I think it looks like there's a Badlands in play, so not, uh, it, Submerge won't be able to be cast for free just yet. So I don't believe he has a bolt, so it looks like Chad's gonna be able to get at least one activation off of that Death Rite so Champion. It looks like he is considering casting a Lightning Bolt this turn. Does I think he, he have bolt? Yeah, I think he does have one in his hand. He also okay. has Nimble Mongoose and Stifle as well, so he's got a lot of options. I think the, the difficult decision here with Demestro is which land to get. Does yeah. he get the Does he get the blue green land uh, to cast the Nimble Mongoose, or does he get the blue red land to take care of uh, the Death Rite Shaman with the Lightning Bolt? And it looks like that's what he's going to go with. Lightning Bolt, get that Shaman out of here, and Brainstorm is going to have to do some heavy lifting the next turn. Uh oh, but Castel oh, draws wow. a Thought Seize. Oh boy! So pretty good draw there for Castell. He's able to thought seize away the um, the brainstorm, which is huge because Demestria doesn't have any other mana, and he he went for the volcanic island for the turn one bolt. So now he's not going to be able to brainstorm, and he has no green mana to actually cast any of his threats. Yeah, the big question here is: Is he going to take the brainstorm? I think that's the easy take in this situation. Uh, yeah, I I can't imagine not taking brainstorm here. You're going to leave him with what a stifle and a Submerge, you don't even have a Forest in play. And you don't have a Sack on it, you have a Grove of the Burn Willow, so you can actually mm -hmm. cast all the spells in your hand and not worry about oh it. Oh boy, is he gonna go with Submerge? It looks like he's just taking a look at Submerge. Now it's decision-making time for Castell. You see him writing down the cards from the Thoughtseize. Obviously, if Demestrio top decks a land and he casts a Tarmogoyf, you know, it's unfortunate, but you, he has two Tarmogoyfs, so there's, you can't get both of them. And the thing is, Demetrio's deck, like we were just talking about, it doesn't have a lot of lands. And it relies on those cantrips to get there. So, yep, Chad comes to the same conclusion, decides to take the brainstorm. Yeah, I mean, again, this is a 17 land deck, so if he peels land on you, good beats. It's a Jelver of Secrets yeah. is the card that is drawn there. And if he draws a backup brainstorm, ponder again. There's nothing you can do to control that, but I think uh, taking, the, uh, taking the brainstorm gives uh, Castell the best opportunity to win the game as so, Castell uh, draws a, a Grove of the Burn Wolves for the turn. It looks like uh, it looks no. It looks like he actually drew a burning catacomb for a turn. Okay. So uh, he had the he had the punishing fire grove combo. So he's gonna punishing fire the delver. Surprised he didn't just sacrifice the burning catacombs because he knows there's a stifle in Joe's hand. I'm a little bit surprised by that too. Maybe he's inducing and, and wants. Okay, I think inducing. You can tell right now. Yeah, he plays the burning catacombs. So he wants to induce the stifle right now. I actually kind of like that. I do. Okay. So uh, Demestrio draws a wasteland. It is not a green source. Well, he. He, and Wasteland's not that effective considering Chad does have two other lands mm -hmm. in his hand. Castell's going to sacrifice this right now. He says, would you like to stifle that? And he's going to patiently yeah. wait. I, I can't imagine not wanting to stifle. Daring him to stifle the Verdant Catacombs. Will Demestro oblige? The only thing I think of is Demestro's maybe considering if I draw a Force of Will, I want to have a blue card to pitch to it. But oh, it looks like he's going to just try to keep chad off of mana again i i don't i don't agree with you i don't think that was a good play for chad because now he's actually putting a lot of pressure on him to get green mana in play look at he he has a grove of the burn willows and a bayou in his hand but the grove is really a card that you don't want to lose to wasteland because especially because he has a punishing fire and uh so if you're, you're going to lose that and you're going to have the bayou in play if the mystery does another wasteland you're off of green mana so even though the mystery has nothing in play you don't have any access to green mana maybe so, maybe a little too cute I think it was a little too cute, yeah. I'd, I'd rather just make a Stifle dead than bait him into casting it. Sure. Yeah. Brainstorm the card drawn here for Demestro this turn, so he's going to go a-digging. Uh -oh. what, 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 does he have a Power Blast? Ooh. Yes. I was going to say, I believe Ooh. Chad did draw a Power Blast that turn, so I would 100% Power Blast there. Castell draws his card. Can he find a creature to do anything with? That would be with? a great draw here. Two mana. Robert oh, Dark Confidant. All right. So that's a good draw, too. Demestrio does have a Submerge, though, yep. because because Chad ended up playing the Bayou instead of the Grove of the Burnwellows. Which I um, think is correct. 
You think that's correct? Just yeah, so you I don't do. want to lose the Grove? I don't want to lose the Grove because of Punishing, because of punishing Fire. Okay. As you see, Demestro, I think he just drew that Lightning Bolt to take care yeah. of that. So Demestro still has that Submerge in his hand, which Castell does know about from that prior Thought Seize. Just going to pass the turn back. So a little draw-go action, and as you have said in the past, Mana Screw normally favors the person who's being Mana Flooded or not that's really true. doing anything. So Chad, let's see if he has a threat here. Oh, we have a Tarmogoyf, mm. so... Tarmogoyf likely going to get submerged at some point. Demestrio can cast it for free, so um, he can choose to cast it uh, in Chad's draw step um, after he wastelands the... Uh, well, no, now he knows about the Grow of the Burn well, yep. so he can't keep him off the green. We're going to get our Tarmogoyf die out there on the table for you guys so we can see just exactly how big that Lurgoyf is. So uh, Demestrio finally draws another land that allows him to search for a green source. So his own Tarmogoyf just could start coming down here. Mm -hmm. And now you have to figure, again, Mana Flood versus Mana Screw. Mana Screw usually wins out because once they draw out of it, uh, Demestrio has plenty of good threats in his hand that he can start unloading onto the table. Yeah, Demestrio has all the goods in his hand. Multiple Tarmogoyfs, Nimble Mongoose, all of that good stuff. He is more than good to go at this moment. He just needed the green mana to be able to cast it. You see a 4-5 Tarmogoyf in the house. So I think the Mestre is okay with just passing the turn back. I'm surprised he actually. Um, I'm surprised he actually did not uh, tap the wasteland and leave Spell Pierce Man out because a Liliana the Veil would be huge right now. Yeah, it certainly would be. You know, even a Blood Braid into Liliana, he has no way to stop that right now. I, I know. I know you're gonna have. I know you like. I know that you want the potential to be able to wasteland something. But at the same time, if Chad draws a Wasteland, he's probably going to go after your green source. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about the Wasteland on your Wasteland while you're tapped out. And you're probably not going to Wasteland here, are you? Because it turn one, it turns off your Submerge. You're probably going to go after Bayou. And you know he has a Grove of the Burn Wheels in his hand. That's the, really the card that That's you want to go after. That's the card that you want a Wasteland, yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, it, he's, he, hopefully, uh, he can dodge a Liliana the Veil or, you know... Looks like Chad didn't draw anything too threatening. Ooh, I don't like the. Uh, do you like the no attack? I, no, I don't like the no attack at all. I definitely attack there. You have a punishing fire. In your yeah, you have the punishing fire Grove combo. I think you. I think you get in there. You're able to get four points of damage through because Demestro conceivably cannot block. As you see, he's going to submerge Tarmogoyf up to the top now. Yeah, worst thing, worst case scenario, you attack and he just submerges there. Either way, though. He's going to do it no matter what. Yeah, it's a submerge on, it's a submerge on your Tarmogoyf, or it's a, it's a force of will on your Punishing Fire that you can probably get back. So I think you're happy with that as well. So a little bit surprised yeah, not to see an attack. Because your Tarmogoyf would just bounce off each other. It's yeah. not like if he forces it, your Tarmogoyf dies. So. Um, Chad in, in rough shape here because the submerge basically turns off his draw step. He didn't draw anything really relevant last turn, and now he's just going to draw another Tarmogoyf, mm -hmm. which basically can't really do much. Um... Chad's under a lot of pressure, too, because Demetrio already got him down to 12, and now Grove of the Burnwells is going to go away. So he can't actually... Um, oh, he has a second a backup, okay. So there's a Tarmogoyf. So this is a good situation for Joe. Joe can attack with both Tarmogoyfs. I believe he has a Spell Pierce, so if Chad actually tries to punish the fire after combat, he'll have the Spell Pierce ready. And um, if he has another mana, he can actually cast the Nimble Mongoos this turn as well. Yeah, Castell in some serious trouble here at the hands of Demetrio. So Demestrio looks like he might potentially be able to force through four damage, drop Chad to eight. And he's coming in with both, just as you had predicted. Castell's going to block one Tarmogoyf, going to put four points of damage through. Castell going to go down to eight. Demestrio going to play a Volcanic Island, tap that Tropical Island to deploy that Nimble Mongoose. Castell going to try the Punching Fire. Spell Pierce takes care of it. And Demestrio, I believe, only has one card left. So now yeah. Castell, he's, now he's got to turn the corner on his own. He's got some comeback work to do. Umuzawa Jete, not a bad top deck if he gets there, but no. Him. Spell Pierce it, which, not paying. <laughs> <laughs> not paying. Yeah, not paying ever, 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 ever. So, both players in top deck mode here. Demestrio is basically going to be able to get in for four here. Mm -hmm. Tarmogoyf has to block. Tarmogoyf has to block Tarmogoyf. Yeah. has to block Tarmogoyf. So Castle's going to go down to up one. To one. Country Power <laughs> comes back, he's able to deal with one of the Tarmogoyfs. Yeah, he's going to fire that off, untap here, so Castell has decay? to draw, he has to draw something of relevance or he's dead. Liliana, Abrupt Decay. He's tapping manas. Blood Braid Elf. 
Whew, another okay. Combo another okay, combo. Good draw. Now, so now he can start getting a punishing power combo. Go, punishing power combo going. The Mestrio just has a Force of Will, which he doesn't have another card to cast it with. Now this entire time, Castell has the Fader Lightning Bolt, but he has no control over that. Yeah, obviously. he has no control over it, but he's doing everything he can with what he can work with. So um, has the punishing fire combo going. Has double Tarmogoyf now. Um, the Mestrio is at 17, so he can't really start putting pressure on him just yet. And Chad's only at one, so. Yeah, Chad has to basically fade a couple of turns of uh, feels lightning like a, bolt, fork bolt. Yeah, it feels like a lot of turns to me. Submerge. Oh boy, aggressive. Let's see what happens here. Very, very aggressive. Very aggressive. <laughs> but he is, I, I think he realizes that the more draw steps that Demestro gets, the worse it is. Yeah, and I like, uh, and, and we've seen this all the There's time where people confidant. just try to be a little too aggressive here. Or not aggressive enough, rather. This is interesting here in the dark. Oh, combat. wow. So now here's a ponder by Demestrio. Hit one, hit two, hit three. That's a. It's a it looks like there's a lightning I think that's a lightning bolt. Yeah, that's a pretty easy keep. Yep, that's a red card. Yeah, at this point, you don't have to slow roll. You know he has a punishment right in his hand. Yeah, it. I mean, what, what he's going to do, because I, I understand why he's doing this too, is because he's going to make it so that Castle like taps out his mana. Or whatever, yeah, punishing. So you know he has one yeah, card. So now so. You just, yeah, now yeah. you just ding, I'm sure. Yeah, and that's it. So, Joe Demestrio is going to win this match two games to zero over Chad Castell. Rug Delver is going to defeat Punishing Jund. And Demestrio is going to move on to five and one.